Interesting night here. Number one contender for the WBA and has won his last 12 fights in a row, and he has 25 knockouts to his credit. His first appearance outside of the Orient for Song Hyun Kim of Korea. He is not a typical Korean fighter, as you will see in the tail of the tape. He has a 5'9 height, two and a half inches taller than Pryor, not as stocky as many Korean boxers. He made the weight easily. Pryor had to struggle at 140 and just did make it. And Aaron Pryor has got an inch advantage in reach over Kim. This crowd excited about this one. The referee is from Panama, veteran international referee Carlos Barracal. He will have no say in the judging. That will go to the three ringside officials, Marco Rodriguez and Hector Hernandez of Mexico, Nicholas Lorenzo Drake of Panama. Three judges, 10-point must scoring system. It is scheduled for 15. The three knockdown rule is in effect, which means the fight ends if three take place for the same man in a single round. There's a mandatory eight count, no standing eight count. You can't be saved by the bell except the 15th round. We know a lot about Pryor. After watching the fight of the year, he won from Arguello last November. We do not know very much about the man from Korea, Song Hyun Kim. We're about to find out, as Pryor is. We do know that Kim is a southpaw. Round one is underway. And Pryor typically, as Kim stumbles there, off balance comes flying out at his opponent. That's a trademark of Aaron Pryor. So a shaky start for Kim, perhaps a little intimidated by Pryor lunging out at him. Pryor can be a boxer, he can be a slugger, be almost anything he wants to be, and tends to be a little wild at times. Fighting the southpaw, Kim. He was doing little else but cover up now and try to figure out what's coming at him. The person of Aaron Pryor here in this first round. Kim has been stationary over in that far corner almost since the bout began, and it seems to be in no hurry about getting out of there. Good right by Pryor snaps through. All Pryor so far, semblance of counter-punching there from Kim. He looks very tentative and very wary, but he drives the left to Pryor's body. Kim obviously feeling his way and feeling some blows from Pryor in the early seconds of this fight. He doesn't move, he just stands in one place and makes almost a half-hearted attempt at defending himself. They say it's so difficult to know about a fighter who's only appeared in the Orient until now. This is being televised back to the people of Korea. As we're past the midway mark of round one, it's but all Aaron Pryor. And I'm sure that Pryor has had much stiffer opposition from the most mediocre of sparring partners compared to what Kim has been doing here. So far, at least very early, Kim, totally unimpressive. Very awkward, very slow. Not really willing to mix it, content to stay on the ropes. Very dangerous thing to have happen as again, Pryor shoots the right through. is a little bit off balance by this very awkward, surprising style of Kim. Indeed, a most unconventional start. Less than 30 seconds to go in the first round here at the Sands in Atlantic City. thrown by Pryor just off the break as Kim turned away from him. The way it is starting, I can't see this one lasting very long, but you don't know. The second's winding down to end the first round, scheduled for 15. Round two is underway. Kim almost didn't get off his stool in time and is greeted with a thunderous right hand from Aaron Pryor. Kim, so far, not showing us anything to make us believe he's remotely in the class of Pryor. This be another WBA number one contender that is overmatched at this early stage. Early in round two, it would certainly appear that way. Fire in total control, able to tee off almost at will against this man. The uppercut by Fryer, the left. All Aaron Fryer. The surprising thing is that only now 
is Kim beginning to move in the ring and run. A couple of weeks ago, we saw McCrory run against Carlin Jones. This man has been standing like he is right now, taking punches to the body and sharp, chopping blows to the head from Pryor. He's outscoring him six and seven punches to one. If indeed the odd one does appear from Kim. Pryor, however, has a cut around his right eye, so Kim certainly has been getting through at least once. He flicks the left out again. A little cut just beside the right eye of Aaron Pryor. That is the blood you see on Kim as well. might have come together to cause that. Again, the pattern continues past the midway mark of the round. Kim on the ropes. And Fire getting arm punchy. The left. Uh, weary. The lefts and the rights is coming. Rapid succession from Pryor. So far, there's the hook from Aaron Pryor. No indication Kim wants to make a fight of this. And I'm afraid we have a mismatch on our hands. No comparison in skills, and now a diminishing ability on the part of Kim to protect himself from those blows from fire. Teeing off on the 28-year-old from Pusan, Korea, as we have less than 30 seconds to go in the second round. has the cut beside his right eye. That is not very important right now. It does not appear to be serious. What is important is, can Kim survive this assault from Aaron Pryor, the reigning WBA World Junior Welterweight Champion? And I would not think that it can go on much longer. The kind of punishment Kim has taken. Just seconds remaining now in round two. No way this can go 15. I don't think we have any more action here this afternoon. The referee's in the corner, the doctor's in the corner. Kim can barely find his stool at the end of the second round. And it's, it's got to be all over. It, it, they're going to let them fight. Well, they went well past the one-minute rest period and gave Kim some extra time. But now the onslaught continues. I don't know why they're allowing it to continue. The doctor was in the corner, concerned about Kim's welfare as well he should be. I'm not enjoying this. I don't know about you. No, it's all over. That's about. That's about. This is ridiculous. Kim, no match for Aaron Fryer. They finally stop it early in this third round. While Fryer said he likes to give the boxers of the world a chance for his title, I think more serious consideration should be given to the type of opponent that uh, people like Aaron Fryer, with their infinite skills, are allowed to meet. It was obvious in the first round that Kim could not make a fight of it. He could not move. He stood there, absorbed the punishment. Late in the second round, as we said, almost that the bell couldn't find his stool. I thought they were stopping it then. Just seconds into round three, the referee did finally move in. Maracal to stop this one-sided match. So prior, TKO winner in the third round. Had that little cut just uh, out of the eyebrow. And that's all that he had to worry about today. We'd like to alert our stations along the line that uh, we'll be taking a station break shortly. And Pryor now, uh, certainly using his uh, his mouth more, or talking it up with his handlers, Panama Lewis and company, than he had to use his hands, although he certainly did unload on Kim. Ending in the third round very early, and we'll return with an interview with the winner, Aaron Pryor, right after this commercial message and a word from our local station. All right, there, there is the announcement confirming what we knew already, of course, that Aaron Pryor won this very easily. Aaron, that wasn't much of a workout for you. you got to be surprised by the way this man didn't fight. Well, he couldn't show his ability on me because I'm the fighter of the year. I stand above all the champions in the world today, and in the, the world... Uh, Boxing Writers Association recognized me as that, and that's what I looked like today. He was a good contender, number one, but it was just that I classed him, I fought him, and I wanted to fight. I'm hungrier. Well, it wasn't much of a match, but what's next for you in the way of a good match, Arguello? Arguello is next, and I'm praying, I'm praying that the people that is behind me stay behind me, and I think ABC and I think all the people 
who put up with me for all this uh, transaction and the day before the fight went on and I thank God and I hope that I can get in this good a shape for the rematch with Alexis in the future. That could be a good one. All right, thanks very much then, Aaron. Between Buffalo, New York, and Cleveland, Ohio, a city of industry, waterfront activity, and history. Old Main, as they call it here in Erie, is one of their fine well, fine crowd is filed in as we have some fresh unbeaten stars that'll rest their rankings against the